Along with its predecessor, 6 and 6 is what I often judge the rest of Jandex music against. Duos like this are stronger when the albums complement each other, filling in various artistic gaps. In a catalog with as many studio albums as Bob Dylan, Metallica, and The White Stripes combined, this approach leaves a pretty big impact. However, it's unlikely this was the artist's intent. To find out why it serves its purpose, perhaps we should envision 6 and 6 in its early days. With the units moniker abandoned, this album was the first one credited only to Jandek. Not to mention, two to three years had passed since Ready for the House, which would normally be considered a large gap between his albums. However, what ended this was an early review in a magazine, motivating Jandek to release more material. Even though his fame has increased, I still think reviews today can bring him further. Perhaps the initial attention encouraged him to try some new approaches with the album in question. Before we get into that, we should note the aspects that haven't changed. The guitar has a similar open tuning as before, so it's possible that it was stowed away for a couple of years, although we can't be sure unless we know when the recordings were made. One noticeable difference, probably my favorite, is the reverb effect heard on the CD version. By the way, when I'm talking about Jandek albums, I refer to the CDs because that's how I store all my music. However, it's come to my attention that some aspects of the LPs are slightly different. Case in point, Jandek's original approach involved pretty basic recording techniques, offering no distractions from what his mind and body produce. As he transferred his library to compact disc, he gave 6 and 6 a touch-up, removing certain imperfections and adding the reverb. Thankfully, the latter is an enhancement rather than a distraction. If Jandek promoted the previous record with a concert in Carlsbad Caverns, it may have sounded like the 6 and 6 CD, that's not to say reverb is exclusive to this album, it's simply where the effect serves it best. Unlike Ready for the House, there are no curveballs here. From the opening chord to the closing, neither the guitar nor the tuning is switched. As the second album, it was the first to take a homogenous approach. You could argue the lopsided European Jewel approach better fits the unsettling nature of Jandek's music but whichever is superior is just a matter of opinion. Feathered Drums kicks off the record with a similar rhythm to Cave In On You from years earlier. However, the mood has shifted from paranoid to cautious. After all, Jandek apparently has something to hide after his time in jail. As an introduction, it's not quite as effective as Naked in the Afternoon, but by no means is it weak. The guitar is strummed here, but then, Jandek switches to his distinct plucking on the iconic Point Judith. This one should not be missed, as it paints quite a lucid picture for a Jandek song. A lonesome, rocky peninsula where the only other humans are way out on the water, yet nature is all the company you need. It's all so quiet there. Why disturb the silence so? Go away in the moonlight and bring back a starfish. Not to mention, the song switches to a shuffling rhythm as the singer gets comfortable with his surroundings. Point Judith is notable not only for being the first Jandek song to mention a real place, but the first of two to mention this one. It's understandable for him to sing about it if he truly grew up in Rhode Island, as some have suggested. Hopefully by now, you're all warmed up for the centerpiece of the album. I Knew You Would Leave is most notable for appearing in John Trube's interview with Jandek, where he explains an album title that came from this song. Clarification of one's work is always welcome, but in the case of Jandek, it's invaluable. The stars must have aligned for him to say that much in such a rare circumstance. Also, Jandek has used other song lyrics as album titles, so perhaps they were equally significant in his mind. Regardless, this one begins with the deliberate metaphor of rocks crumbling into sand, the same way people leave us for good, yet still exist in our memories. 
In the eight minutes that follow, Jandek honors the guiding light of his creator, employing esoteric symbols like the Great Parade and the Hyena, and then leaves us with a sort of cosmic YOLO message. It is the gift of man to live the days long. The night's longer. Overall, despite being the longest song in Jandek's early catalog, it certainly doesn't overstay its welcome. He must have seen real potential in the lyrics to stretch them out for so long. Other treats abound. Jandek kicks it into high gear on wild strawberries as he revisits the shore for more urgent matters. Forgive Me is an oddly vivid take on Adam and Eve, while Hilltop Serenade is more baffling. Most of his lyrics are barely connected until Jandek starts calling for the mysterious Mr. Jenry as if he's using a Ouija board. Since the lyrics are repeated for clarity in the second half, perhaps some confusion was expected. Unlike Ready for the House, the ending of 6 and 6 is very much complete. The way I see it, delinquent words depicts a hooligan who has begun to change his ways. Despite his drinking, his bloody lip, and his reputation, he's realizing that all beings have the same origin and suffer the same fate. The all-encompassing dust he speaks of could symbolize many things, depending on your spiritual beliefs. This epiphany would be profound elsewhere on the record, but its placement at the end is nothing short of brilliant. If it only took that one review to keep the albums coming, 6 and 6 represents a new direction in Jandek's life. Perhaps Ready for the House was something to cross off his bucket list while keeping up with more pressing matters, but this time, a newfound determination is reflected in his work while he follows much of the old formula, resulting in a solid one-two punch among Jandek albums. Lyrically, Six and Six truly shines, delivering introspective verses with varied symbolism, but still preserving the sort of oddities that defined its predecessor. Cover everything with a haze of reverb, and it becomes an instant classic. Sure, its introduction could be stronger, since first impressions make all the difference with this music. Also, if you're listening to the Jandek albums in order, you might find that this one is lacking in the subverted expectations department. Thankfully, Ready for the House has you covered if these are serious problems for you. Whichever you prefer, 6 and 6 offers a big glass of what Seth Tissue calls the distilled essence of Jandek, and quenches my thirst no matter what I've been up to. <laughs>